RDR viewers again. We're gonna do a, a little demonstration on sandbags. Okay, we're gonna shoot at them. And behind here, we got a dummy. We're gonna see uh, if the rounds will penetrate through the sandbags. Uh, we have a dummy like it's gonna be uh, somebody's uh, against the sandbags itself. So if, for viewers out there, uh, I want you to pay attention of if, if the rounds are gonna stop it or not. And Josh will uh, go a little bit more in detail. So you'll see this in a lot of movies, um, a lot of video games, and actually used in the military. So what I want to see is when you're behind this in the movies or video games, it doesn't penetrate at all for any type of caliber. But in the military, when you use a, around a 5.56 or a 308, I believe it can penetrate this uh, just because of the velocity. However, density is what, which is what sandbags are pretty much made out of because they're sand. Density is kryptonite to a bullet. The more dense something is, the more stopping power it has against a caliber. So I want to see if this would actually, if I was covering behind, if I was taking cover behind sandbags, and if I was in the military or any type of other situation, what would it stop? What if someone's shooting a higher caliber? Am I safe behind the sandbags or the sandbags or not? And that's what we're here to find out today. We're gonna go all the way up again from the 22 all the way up. And we're gonna make it a little more entertaining by shooting multiple rounds rather than one by one. We're gonna shoot multiple rounds when we get into the higher calibers. All right, before we go through all our shoots, as we all know, we all go emphasize on safety all the time. Safety is paramount, whatever we do. In the military, we express that a lot and we push that. Uh, the first safety rule will be treat every weapon if it's loaded. Second one is never point your weapon until you attend to fire. Third is keep your finger straight off the trigger until you attend to fire. And the last safety is keep your weapon on safe until you intend to fire. Okay, so. Before you have all this and you do all that, you must have ear protections that I have on my head, which goes on my ear, and your eye protection to keep any debris or rounds uh, from hitting your eyes. So uh, when we do training, whether it be for fun, training, or activity, you want to make sure you're always pushing for safety. So we're going to be shooting the old reliable, the 22 long rifle. Um, I'm going to shoot a little bit to the left because I'm going to save the middle portion of the sandbags with the targets behind for the higher calibers because I know the 22 will be stopped. Uh, so let's see what goes on. I'll be shooting two rounds out of this. Clear. So my two rounds are on the same sandbag. Both right here, you can see the tiny little holes that the, uh, they cause is the 22. But if you go over here, on the back side, nothing ripped through. Uh, again, that's because a 22 is a round that is made to uh, at a high velocity, but it also breaks apart because of how tiny it is. But density is the kryptonite of a bullet, so it's gonna stop that every single time. Now we're gonna move on to the, I believe the 380. Now we're gonna shoot the 380. The little uh, bodyguard by MP, and uh, I'm going to take five shots here and see what happens to the sand. Will it penetrate? Clear. Get all the same area. Don't create a smiley face. Yes, it is. But. You can see the, the rounds right around here. I believe one went here, and then the last four went here. That's the front view. Let's check at the back if it went through, which I believe it didn't. And you can see everything on the back view over here. There's no penetration whatsoever. There's no sand falling out. So it didn't do really any damage. So now we're gonna move on to the uh, nine millimeter Glock 17. Now I'm gonna shoot the Glock 17, the 135 Federal Premium JHPs. At the sandbag, I'm going to pretty much unload a clip on it to see what happens. We'll go from there.
clear. So what Ira did here is he shot the same sandbag uh, pretty much the entire time. So you can see what he was doing here is he was shooting his 9mm here the entire time. I believe it still stopped it. Um, it is a good test that he is shooting the same sandbag to see if it is going to cause maybe more of a tunnel, maybe more of a pathway for the other uh, 9mm bullets. But on the back side, it completely stopped it. So no matter if someone was shooting at the same sandbag with the whole entire magazine, it still didn't penetrate. It still had great stopping power. So now we're going to move on to the 40 Smith & Wesson. So here's uh, 40 Smith & Wesson again. They've got gonna shoot five rounds, and uh, I'm gonna try and shoot the same sandbag the entire time. We're clear. So you can see I shot around here, um, two different sandbags, but you come on the back side, which again, this is your 40. There's nothing on the back side of this, so it stopped your 40 caliber as well. Now we're going to get into the guns that I believe should penetrate this. The next one is going to be our Springfield Saints, which is the 5.56 NATO armor piercing. Um, and then we're going to go up to the 308 and then our hollow points. Uh, me and Ira are going to be shooting both of our Springfield Saints at the same time and unloading an entire magazine on this at the dummy target. Alright, so now we're going to unload on the... Uh Sandbag with multiple uh, 556. We're gonna unload the whole clip each to see what happens to the sandbag. Will it hold up? Uh, this is the type of uh, barriers we use in uh, Iraq, Afghanistan. Uh, when we go to combat, we use uh, whatever is out there to, uh, to hide behind. So let's find out. We're gonna uh, test the uh, 556 uh, Springfield uh, AR-15s at the sandbags at multiple multiple times. We're gonna load uh, several mags into it uh, with uh, what we use in the military, the 62 grain K by Federal Ammunition. All right, the uh, piercing rounds. Uh, this is the type of rounds we use in the military. All right, now I reckon Afghanistan. This is the kind of barriers we use out there. Whatever's out there to take cover. Uh, we'll find out what happens to uh, the rounds. Will it penetrate? We'll find out and see. Clear. Clear. All right, well, you can see what me and Ira were aiming at the entire time, which was center mass right here on the two lower ones. Now if we come on the back side, if we look and see if anything penetrated, and even though it did a bunch of damage on the front, it did not penetrate the back, and these are armor piercing 5.56 NATO. So that shows you how density stops different types of calibers. Um, this is a great example. Even though it looks like this would have penetrated from the front side, it definitely didn't on the back side. So if you look at the dummy here that I had set up, Okay, I made a target back here behind the sandbag. There's nothing at all. Okay, and if you look at the sandbag right in front of you, uh, there's no penetration at all. So dirt is compact and, and condensed, so it'll stop that high velocity round. All right, if you look in the front, we fired at the same area to see what would happen. So you're shooting at the same area, you'd penetrate, you'd think it'd, it'd uh, weaken that spot. But apparently it didn't. So it's safe to say that you can take dirt and uh, build them up and use that as a as a cover for yourself from uh, the enemy or whoever's uh, shooting at you, even with the high velocity of caliber. So I could only find a piece of the Area 15 calibers. Uh, I'm trying to look for more, but that's one of them. Uh, I doubt I'm going to find any more just because there's so much sand, but it just shows you the stopping power of sand. 
uh, sandbags alone are very good and that's why the military currently uses them. So we're gonna move on to my 308 and I'm gonna shoot five rounds, probably around head level, maybe chest level of that target dummy and I believe that should go through. Uh, that is a hunting caliber and I don't think that density is gonna stop it. Here's my Springfield SOCOM M1A16 again. What we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to this portion of the sandbags and I'm going to shoot around here, which is going to be head and chest level of the dummy. Again, I believe this should penetrate since this is a 308 full metal jacket, 147 grains. Um, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna shoot five shots around 10 feet. Off safe. And we are clear. So you can see what I was ripping through here and in here you can see the small holes because this is going at a very high rate of velocity. We go on the back side and actually it did, it stopped everything. Um, so I was wrong on how I thought it was going to go through. So again, that shows you the stopping power of sandbags and why it's used in the military. This surprised me to be honest with you on it stopping it. Um, I didn't know that it, sandbags would work this well, but it goes to show that even when we're making these videos, we're also learning at the same time. All right, now we're gonna fire the shotguns. Uh, we're gonna fire some slugs at it. Uh, several multiple shots. We're gonna do simultaneously, me and Josh. Uh, he's got his bus stock. I'm gonna fire from the hip with my uh, Mossberg 590. Okay, so we're gonna go from there. I'm back on safe. Back you on can safe. See the amount of sand that piled up here, and you can also see the dummy in the back got knocked over. However, I don't believe he got knocked over because of round, because I see nothing on him. He got knocked over just because the sandbags were being pushed back by the amount of force the hollow points are putting out. So, this dummy is completely safe. Now, we went all the way from a 22 up to a 308 to a hollow point slug, which are one ounce. And you look at this and the amount of damage it's showing, but I would feel comfortable hiding behind sandbags now that we've done this test uh, and say that I would be safe no matter what the caliber is. Um, now, if you get up to a 50 BMG or anything of the sort, I know that will go through these sandbags, but from all the way up to a 308 and a hollow point slug, you're safe. You're pretty safe behind that. All right, so uh, now you see uh, how uh, sandbags and dirt uh, withstand uh, types of rounds. Uh, these are the type of cover, like I said, we used in the uh, in combat zones in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, so you see really how uh, effective these are as far as uh, man-made uh, objects to, to, to build as barriers so you can take cover behind. Uh, with that being said, uh, hey, if, uh, this is a good demonstration for you all at home and that if uh, you want to learn, keep learning, uh, keep watching and stay tuned to our channel, RDR. If you uh, would like to subscribe, click that subscribe button. And if you like this, go ahead and hit that like button. And also, if you want to put leave some comments for us all, thank you very much for watching RDR. Stay tuned for the next uh, shots. I know what the viewers really want to see. Are you safe behind a sandbag or a sandbag wall from a tomahawk? We'll see. If I want to come get you, I will. <laughs>